Hi everyone, this is Peter here. I hope you're all doing great. This is gonna be another macro compilation. All of the images that I'm about to show you were captured with the Canon R7 and the Laowa 90mm 2x ultra macro lens, but for some of the very small subjects, I also attached the Nisi 49mm close-up lens just to boost the magnification to approximately 3x. At that magnification ratio, stacking is necessary for most subjects, but sometimes that can be quite difficult due to technical issues. For example, the flash doesn't recycle quick enough or the subjects are not cooperative enough, they can be quite skittish and move around. Just before we look at the images, if you're new to the channel and you love nature photography, especially macros, I've got heaps of videos for you, including educational macro videos and plenty of tutorials. Anyway, let's have a look at those macros now. This first portrait is of a house spider that I found in a little silk tent. This specimen was really small and this final image consists of 7 frames. For this particular image I actually experimented with the multi-flash function on my EX2RT speedlight instead of my usual manual flash at full output, so at a significantly lower output but higher recycle rate I could use the low continuous shooting mode on my R7. For most scenarios though, I still prefer to use the manual flash to keep the ISO as low as possible for cleaner images. This spider, by the way, is quite common in Australia and I've seen many of them on a giant Swiss cheese plant in the garden. Our next subject is a beautiful Victorian Huntsman spider that was actually lurking inside the car and managed to freak me out as it scurried across the window a few centimeters away from my face while I was driving and doing a head check. When I got home I shepherded it outside and took all of these images while it was spread out on the side panel of the car. It was really skittish, so it took me a few attempts to get these couple of high angle shots where you can see the interesting patterns on the abdomen and those massive long legs. I think it was just a sub-adult, as they can grow significantly larger, this was approximately 10 centimeters in length. I also took these more detailed shots from a different oblique angle, where you can see the stripes on the legs and the long CT covering them. The first shot consists of 5 images and some focal planes were unfortunately missing, but this following image is pretty detailed from front to back, where I managed to blend 9 individual shots in Photoshop to maximize depth of focus. I also got even closer for the final two portraits, where you can see so much detail in the interior eyes, massive pedipalps and chelicery. I'm not entirely sure what spider species I captured in our garden while it was building its web in this next image, but it was most likely an orchard spider that belongs to the genus of long-jawed orb beavers. Orb beavers tend to have unique and fascinating patterns of different colors on their abdomen, and the underside of this specimen's abdomen was no exception. Our next subject is a small parasitic wasp. This extremely tiny specimen was moving non-stop on the leaf of our Swiss cheese plant. These braconid wasps can be found throughout Australia in forests, wetlands and urban areas too. They are closely related to ichneumonid wasps and parasitize many insect groups the same way. Braconid wasps use the egg and adult stages of other insects as hosts for their young. Once they find a suitable host, eggs are then laid on or inside the victim providing the wasp larvae with a meal when they hatch. They can also be beneficial agriculturally, as they can be used as pest control agents, for example against aphids. Our next series is of rainbow ants that I found in our driveway while they were swarming and feeding on a dead earthworm. I also took heaps of footage at different angles and magnification ratios while they were feasting. Meat ants that belong to the genus Iridomyrmex are used in rural Australia by farmers to remove animal carcasses from their land. A dead animal placed on a nest would be reduced to bones over a period of weeks. It was fascinating to observe and see how powerful those pincers can be as they were chewing and tearing off meat of the dead segmented invertebrate. Our last subject is a male garden jumping spider and I captured all of these images at maximum magnification of approximately 3x. It was extremely inquisitive and never stopped moving. It was a rather large specimen, probably one of the biggest I've ever encountered of this genus with 
beautiful vibrant orange and silver coloration. I absolutely love jumping spiders with those gigantic forward facing eyes which make them look quite funny and friendly. They have exceptional vision and are terrific ambush predators. I managed to capture it from multiple angles in these single frames but couldn't get deeper stacks but especially loved the last few portraits where the focus was perfect on its eyes. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little compilation. You might also want to have a look at these next. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one.